Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. Today, as promised, I'm looking at how many villagers you need to sustain production of different units in the Feudal Age. If you're looking for Castle Age units like Knights or Cavalry Archers or the Unique units, then I may be addressing those in a future video, but not this one. So some of you may have noticed that this video took me a little while to finish up, and now we're so into making it, I clued into the fact that this is basically a build order video. And at this point, I find build order stuff to be the least interesting topic to look at in Age of Empires. And it's also kind of funny to me that I'm making this video because I'm actually not good enough at executing game plans to really make much use of this information at all. Like they say, those that can't do, teach, and those that can't teach, teach gym, right? Just kidding, guys. It was a bit of a struggle for me to have fun making this one, but I carried on just in case the info was helpful to some of you in making your own build orders down the road. As with all my videos though, half is about the final result, half is showing you guys the process I use to answer them, and the last half is making sure that all the math I do is perfect and that there are no mistakes. That being said, I was surprised by a few of the results, and hidden in this video are some reasons why you probably see a lot more of some particular units than others in the Feudal Age. So bring it back to the goal of the video, I'm interested in sustaining production of units, meaning the cost to constantly produce units is offset exactly by villager collection. I've tried to give you the info for a variety of possible scenarios so that you can play around with it to suit your preferred feudal rush combos and however many ecotechs that you normally research. Of course, ideally you want to save up resources, get research, continue villager production, and ultimately advance to the castle age. So you're naturally going to want more villagers on each resource than I mentioned here. But I'm hoping this is still a useful guide and gives you a new tool in your tool belt for the feudal age. First, we'll want to know how quickly villagers gather with different economic upgrades. I'll go through the different resources in order and give you a couple different scenarios. Let's start with the farms. If you have no wheelbarrow and no horse collar, it takes 7 villagers 10 minutes to gather 1,380 food. If you work that out, that's about 19.7 food per minute, including one farm reseed in there. Theoretically, because of reseed time, it's a bit better or worse depending on whether you have horse color or not, but that's really not going to affect it too much, and I think that we can say this is a pretty rough estimate for how quickly your villagers will be gathering from farms over time. After researching wheelbarrow, it gets a little bit better, and 7 villagers for 10 minutes can collect 1,530 food, which is about 21.9 food per minute. This also includes a farm reseed during that period, and we notice it's a little bit better. I feel okay summarizing that as typical villagers in the feudal age will collect between 19.7 and 21.9 food per minute. So now let's take a look at the lumberjacks. If we're looking at wood collectors without upgrades, 4 villagers in 4 minutes can get 344 wood. That's about 21.5 wood per minute. More likely you'll have the wood upgrade though. If you have double bit axe and no wheelbarrow researched, 4 villagers in 3.5 minutes can get 356 wood. That's about 25.4 wood per minute, which is an 18% increase over the last situation without that tech. That is definitely worth it to invest in. Now what happens if you add wheelbarrow on top of that? Well, in that case 4 villagers in 3.5 minutes can get 365 wood. That's about 26.1 wood per minute per villager which is a 21% increase over having no upgrades at all. It looks like the effect of wheelbarrow isn't very large here, or at least we might be expecting more, and that's because there's still the time that it takes to chop down the tree, and walking time is still a factor here. Wheelbarrow would start to pay off more as the villagers got farther away from the lumber camp, but I'm not too interested in getting into all that detail, it's good enough for our purposes right now, and we'll just be careful to make sure that we're rounding up on the number of villagers that we need to sustain production later. Now let's take a look at gold. Without any upgrades in being right beside the mine, 4 villagers in 2 minutes can get 171 gold, which is about 21.4 gold per minute. Assuming that you did invest in the wheelbarrow but not in the gold mining, you'll find that 4 villagers in 2 minutes can get 174 gold. That's about 21.8 gold per minute, and that's a 1.6% increase. 
The thing is, the mines were so close anyway, and ideally there isn't going to be very much walking time, so wheelbarrow doesn't really have an effect on this situation. Now, if you have wheelbarrow and the gold mining upgrade, four villagers in two minutes can get 201 gold, which is about 25.1 gold per minute. That's a 17% increase over the base collection rate. So now that we have all the rates for feudal age collection, let's look at how long it takes to make the various military units. We can then say how many villagers we need to be collecting each resource in order to sustain military production of those units. So when I give a range here saying maybe it takes 8 to 10 lumberjacks to sustain production, I don't mean you decide if you want 8 or 10. What that means is that if you get all of the economic upgrades in feudal age, you can do it with 8, and if you don't get any of the upgrades, you need 10. There's no do what you want stuff happening here. I'm giving you the numbers that you need to just barely get by with and without eco upgrades. With the Aztecs, bear in mind that they produce military units 15% faster, which is actually 18% faster, but they also get some eco bonuses that help their collecting efficiency. You may find you have to modify the number of villagers by one as Aztecs in order to keep the same level of constant production. One last thing to note is, although I'm going to report the number of villagers as a decimal, you always round up when it comes to sustaining production. If you mathematically need 3.1 villagers on wood to keep production going, that means you need 4. 3 isn't quite enough, so you'd have to go up to 4 in that case. I just wanted to put all that out there before we start, so now let's take a look at the units. Let's begin with sustaining archers from the archery range. Archers are produced in 35 seconds and they cost 25 wood and 45 gold. That means every minute you're going to be spending 43 wood and 77 gold per archery range. Assuming no eco upgrades at all, that's 2 villagers on wood and 3.6 on gold per archery range. On 2 archery ranges then, we can just double that. And it's 4 villagers on wood and 7 on gold to just barely scrape by with no eco upgrades. You're probably even going to drop a little bit on gold over time there. On two archery ranges with all upgrades and wheelbarrow, that goes down to 3.4 villagers on wood and 6.1 on gold. So with those eco upgrades, going 4 on wood and 7 on gold will mean you're actually saving up some resources. From what I've seen, it's pretty common to go double archery ranges though. So for that, it looks like you need 4 on wood and 7 on gold to keep the archers coming at a constant rate. The nice thing here is that it's not costing you any food to make archers, so all of your farmers can keep working to save up that food that you need for the castle age and to invest in technologies more easily while keeping up your military presence. Now what about for the Britons? Well Briton archers are created in 29 seconds instead of 35, so to keep two archery ranges going full time you need more villagers working. The payoff though is that you'll be able to get more archers out of those ranges. If we do the calculation, you need 4 to 4.8 on wood, depending on eco upgrades of course, and 7.4 to 8.7 on gold. Basically that means you need an extra villager on wood and probably two more on gold in order to keep production constant. If you're able to do that, you'll end up getting archers faster than the non-Briton players. If you're playing as the Britons and have 4 on wood and 7 on gold, that means you'll still be making the same number of archers as other players in the same time period, but you'll be wasting your team bonus to make them faster and you're going to have some downtime at the archery ranges. Now let's take a look at sustaining skirmishers at one archery range. Skirmishers are created in 22 seconds for most civilizations and cost 25 food and 35 wood. That means constant skirmisher production at one archery range takes 69 food and 96 wood. Depending on how many eco upgrades you have, that means 3.2 to 3.5 on farms and 3.7 to 4.5 on wood per archery range. Basically, if you have two archery ranges and want constant villager production, you need 7 on food and 8 on wood, assuming you have the first wood upgrade. Bear in mind that my wood tests were done with a minimal distance between the lumber camp and the tree line and with only a few villagers chopping nearby, so you're going to have to keep an eye on the lumber camps to maintain that level of efficiency. Notice that even though the skirmisher is a cheap trash unit, it actually takes more villagers to sustain production than it did for the archers, because skirmishers are created significantly faster than archers. Now let's take a look at the cost needed to sustain the mana arms. Mana arms and militia both take 21 seconds to train, and at a cost of 60 food and 20 gold, that means they require 172 food and 58 gold per minute. That's between 7.9 and 8.7 farmers and 2.3 to 2.7 gold miners per barracks. With double barracks making men at arms constantly, you need 16 to 18 farmers just to keep that production coming, depending on whether you have wheelbarrow or not. 
When testing it, I could almost get by on 16 farmers with no wheelbarrow as the Japanese and was slowly gaining gold with 7 gold miners, which was what I was expecting. For goth men-at-arms, which are produced faster, that's a hefty 215 food and 73 gold per minute, which for a constantly working double barrack setup would mean around 22 farmers and 6 or 7 gold miners, depending on whether you got the gold mining upgrade. It's easy to see why the men-at-arms don't usually make for common feudal attack units, and it's unlikely that you'll have 20-ish farms up and running in the feudal age. Now let's take a look at the cost needed to sustain spearmen. Spearmen are 35 food and 25 wood and take 22 seconds to produce. To sustain production at one barracks, that means you need 96 food and 69 wood, which means two barracks constantly producing spearmen would require 8.8 .8 .8 to 9.7 farmers and 5.3 to 6.4 lumberjacks to sustain production. In this clip, I'm using 10 farmers and 7 lumberjacks with no eco upgrades and I'm slowly saving away wood. That sounds like a reasonable eco balance to have in the feudal age, although spearmen aren't really the best unit for feudal pressure. Now let's take a look at sustaining scout cavalry production. Scouts take 30 seconds to build and cost 80 food, which is 160 food per minute per stable. That's between 7.3 and 8.1 farmers per stable, and double stables making scouts therefore require 15 to 17 farmers. That's a lot of food, and bear in mind that you need more if you want to keep making villagers and advance and get research and all that good stuff. This is probably part of the reason why you might see early scouts in feudal and then a transition into archers, so that you can actually save up the food to advance. One thing that might explain why you also see scout rushes despite the high cost is because farming is a slower way of gathering food. So if you're fishing and hunting, you can get away with fewer villagers on farms than I've mentioned. Still, it's a pretty big cost, and after 10 scouts, you've already invested the total amount of food that you needed to advance the castle age. If you're going scout cavalry, you better make them count. What about the Hun scout cavalry though? Well, the Hun stables work 20% faster, so the scouts take 25 seconds instead of 30. One interesting thing to note is that it's very clearly 25 and not 24 seconds. So the game is doing 30 seconds for the basic scout cavalry divided by 1.2 instead of 30 times 0.8 to get their 20% faster. That means they are working 20% faster, as it says, instead of reducing the creation time by 20%. Unlike the Japanese units attacking 25% faster mix up in the wording, in this one the text does indeed describe the increased rate perfectly. So it's a true 20% faster and not a secret 25%. Good job on that one, guys. So here's one everybody wants to know about, the galleys. So galleys take one minute to produce and they cost 90 wood and 30 gold. Depending on your eco upgrades, that's between 3.5 to 4.2 lumberjacks per dock and 1.2 to 1.4 gold miners. For double docks, that means you need seven to nine lumberjacks to sustain production, depending on your eco upgrades, and three miners should do it. For triple docks, you need 11 to 13 lumberjacks and four to five gold miners. Obviously, if you're planning to do a galley rush with three docks, you're going to need wood for other things as well, but it's good to know that even after you get the double bit axe, you need 11 of them just to keep those docks working. I would imagine that number would quickly become 12 or 13, even if you had the eco upgrade, just because we were looking at that best case scenario of where the lumber camp is right beside the wood line. But what about for those Vikings? Well, their ships are made in the same amount of time as everybody else, but they cost 72 wood and 24 gold. That means they can sustain a dock with 2.8 to 3.3 on wood instead of the usual 3.5 to 4.2. That's a significant difference, honestly, and with three docks constantly working and all eco upgrades, that means they can get by on 9 instead of 11 lumberjacks and 3 instead of 4 on gold, like other civs would need in a similar situation. When they're having a triple dock galley war, they effectively have three more villagers than the other player, all other things being equal. They also get the wheelbarrow tech automatically, so their wood and food collection get an immediate jump. Now here's an unusual one. What about sustained tower construction? Well, one villager takes 80 seconds to build a tower, or 94 stone per minute to sustain. A villager collects 30 stone in two minutes, so it should take 6.3 villagers on stone to keep tower production by one villager constant. You're probably going to be building towers with more than one villager though, especially if you're tower rushing. If you assume four villagers, they take 40 seconds to build a tower together, which is only twice as fast as one villager does, so they would need 12.6 villagers on stone to maintain that tower production. 
I was all surprised by that, as that seems like a lot of stone miners. It's easy to see why people say that tower rushing isn't super common at higher level games. It just seems like if you have 13 villagers hanging around, you can probably put them to better use in making actual units constantly rather than those towers. So that's all the units in Feudal Age plus towers. I'd recommend you treat these numbers more like a ballpark idea for how many you need to assign rather than take them completely literally, because like I said, the efficiency might not be perfect here over the long run. There's also other little things to take into account, like the fact that the Mayans are slower to farm, Turks get gold faster, Celts get wood faster, so you have to keep those things in mind based on what civilization you're playing. So that was a lot of info in this video, maybe some of you are understanding why I find this to be the least interesting topic to talk about in Age of Empires, and I'll try to make my upcoming videos a little bit more entertaining for you guys. I do want to go back and follow up with the Age of Empires weird logic video I promised back when I had one subscriber. How long ago it seems now, and maybe that one will make up for this, which was kind of dry, I admit. Coming up next though, I have the Indian Civ Overview, and so that's coming down the pipe, and stay tuned for that. Take it easy guys, and I will see you next time.